Section 3 of The Maker of Rainbows. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jill Janowitz. The Maker of Rainbows by Richard Legallion. The Man with Something in His Eye. Once on a time toward the end of February, when the snow still festered in the New York streets and the wind blew cruelly from river to river, a strange figure made a somewhat storm-tossed progress along 42nd Street, walking toward the east side. He was a tall, distinguished, curiously sad-looking man, with longish hair growing gray and clothes which, though they had been brushed many times, still proclaimed aloud a Bond Street tailor. As he walked along, he had evidently some trouble with one of his eyes, which he rubbed from time to time, as though a cinder, perhaps from the elevated railroad, had lodged there, and at last he held a handkerchief to it as he walked along. But whatever the trouble was, it did not seem to interfere with a keen and kindly vision that noted every object and character of the thronged street. Now and again, strangers in that noisy and bewildering quarter would ask directions from him, and he never failed to stop with an aristocratic painstaking courtesy and set them on their way. Nervous old women with bundles of perilous crossings found his arm ready to pilot them safely to the other side. There was about him a curious gentleness which, after a while, did not fail to attract the attention of enterprising boys and observing beggars, for whom, as he walked along, evidently sorely troubled with his eye, he did not fail to find pennies and kind words. At last he had become so noticeable for these oddities of behavior that as he went along he had collected quite an escort of miscellaneous individuals, ragged children with pale, precocious faces, voluble old Irish women with bedraggled petticoats, sturdy beggars on crutches, and a sprinkling of so-called respectable people curiously hovering on the skirts of the strange crowd. From some of these last came at length unkindly comments. The man was evidently crazy. More probably, he was drunk. But it was plainly evident that he had something the matter with his eye. At last a kindly individual suggested that he should go to a drug store and get the drug clerk to look at his eye. To this the stranger assented, and, accompanied by his motley escort, he entered a drug store and put himself into the hands of the clerk. While the crowd thronged the door and glared through the windows, wondering what was the matter with this eccentric gentleman, who, after all, was very free with his pants and had so kind a tongue, a policeman did not, of course, fail to elbow himself into the street to inquire what was the matter. Meanwhile, the drug clerk proceeded to lift up the stranger's eyelid in a professional manner, searching for the extraneous particle of pain. At last he found something, and made a strange announcement. The something in the stranger's eye was pity. No wonder it had caused such a sensation in the most pitiless city in the world. End of Section 3